Hi there, I'm Lee Brainerd. Welcome to Soothkeep. Today I want to encourage your hearts with another rapture nugget. The good news that someday soon the Lord is going to gather his church out of this world. He's going to dry our eyes as we're dancing in the clouds. Then he's going to usher us into such joy that we can scarcely imagine. And this joy is going to last for all of eternity. Now, currently, we are in a battle. We are in the good fight of faith. We are fighting the battle of preaching the gospel. We are fighting the battle of standing for truth. We are fighting for the truth of the living God. Daily, we have to don the full armor of God or we cannot even stand in this battle. And there's no escaping from this war except by death or through the rapture. There's no discharge in the time of war, as the Bible says. Now, we're not shirking our duty in this war, but we do long for the day when this war comes to its close. We long for the enemies of God to be vanquished and for the glory of God to dominate this entire planet, for the truth of God to dominate this entire planet. Now, currently, the darkness is gathering around the globe at an insane pace. It's a thick evil that's crushing America, that's crushing Europe, crushing Canada, crushing Australia, crushing New Zealand. This is an evil so tangible that we can taste it and feel it as it wraps its evil tentacles around the world. Now the goal of this darkness is to crush all light, all truth in this world. The goal of this darkness is to crush every institution of God. It's to crush the Bible. It's to crush the testimony of Jesus. To crush the church. You know, they, the darkness wants to get to the point where they're going to ban the Word of God, ban talking about Jesus, ban the gospel, ban any talk about biblical morality, ban any talk about a biblical marriage. All this will be regarded is evil. It will be regarded as lack of love. This darkness, in fact, is going to get so thick that it will be difficult for anyone to preach the truth of God, to stand for the truth of God. In fact, the Bible says night is coming when no man can work. I want you to think about this. In the tribulation, this darkness is going to be so thick upon the world that the only way that the tribulation saints will be able to testify the things of the living God and the things of Jesus will be through supernatural power. Hence the 144,000, hence that supernatural outpouring of the Holy Spirit that's going to go far beyond what we saw at Pentecost. Hence the two witnesses, hence the three angels in the heavens. In the meantime, folks, we have to slog through the darkness. Darkness that can be felt. We, we hate this darkness, but we do relish the opportunity to be a testimony for the Lord Jesus in the darkness, to be the light shining in the darkness, to be good soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ in the face of the tremendous evil that's around us. And Understand this, that the darker it gets, the more our light is going to be noticed by those who are interested in seeking the light. So take heart in the darkness, folks. Don't be discouraged by the darkness. Be encouraged by the opportunity to stand for truth in the most glorious hour of the church since the early days. Now, currently, the church is in a state of apostasy or a state of departure. The love of the most who profess to be born again, the love of the most who profess to be evangelical Christians is growing cold. Men are embracing cultural Christianity and pop culture Christianity and political Christianity and um, post-millennial Christianity. They're embracing every form of Christianity that can be had that isn't 
biblical Christianity. Men are walking away from the Jesus of the Bible and the Bible of Jesus. In fact, in 2 Timothy 3, the first five verses, we see the current state of the church plainly splashed on the pages of Scripture. It says perilous times are going to come, and they're here. When men are lovers of themselves, and they're covetous, and they're proud, and they're lovers of pleasure more than the lovers of God, and they have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. Oh, but blessed truth, folks, morning is coming. I want you to think about that. We are in the darkness, but morning is coming. The first sign of the morning is the morning star. In the same way, the first sign of the day of the Lord is the rapture of the church. Indeed, Jesus presents his coming for the church as the morning star. The church's gathering out of this world is going to be the first warning sign to the world that the day of judgment is coming. It's a warning shot fired over the bow of the world. And when that rapture happens, the world is not going to know what hit. Tens of millions of people, maybe hundreds of millions of people around the world are going to be missing. And they're not going to want to believe the true explanation which is that Jesus himself fulfilled the word of God and came down and took them. Hence, they're going to go down paths of craziness with new age explanations and UFO alien invasion explanations. Anything, anything but the truth. But joy unspeakable is coming, folks. Psalm 30 verse 5 tells us weeping endures for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Right now we're in the time of weeping. We're in the time of sorrow. We're in the time of tribulation. We are in the time of Christ's patience. We are in the time of the patience of Christ. But joy is going to come. It's going to come at the rapture. It's going to come at the dawn of the day of the Lord. And this joy is going to be with us for all of eternity. Isaiah 61 3 tells us that we are going to set aside the spirit of heaviness forever and we are going to put on the garment of praise forever. We will never again have to fight the good fight of faith. You will never again have to force your tired, broken, weary, discouraged heart to give thanks in all things. You will never again lay your head on your pillow with your heart feeling as heavy as lead, wondering how you can make it through the night and the next day, how you can make it through another day. You will never again slog through the day feeling like your heart and legs are made of lead. You will never have to face a painful situation that you would rather not face. Some glorious day, you will be sitting around a campfire or a patio fire or a fireplace with your friends and it is going to dawn on you that it has been a million years since you were discouraged. Can you imagine the conversations, folks? Hey, Dick, do you remember what it was like to be discouraged? Hey, Jane, do you remember what it was like to have a broken heart? This is going to be amazing, folks. So be encouraged. Romans 13, 12 tells us that the night is far spent and the day is at hand. The eternal day is at hand. This reminds me of the joy of watching a sunrise. Except that this is the sunrise of the eternal day. We are going to enjoy physical sunsets on a million planets in eternity. But we will never have the sun set on our dreams, our plans, our desires, our visions, our ambitions, our goals. Now, when we get into eternity, there's going to be a whole bunch of no mores. For instance, in Revelation 21, 4, we read, No more tears, no more weeping, no more sorrow, and no more death. And once we take the analogy of this verse, the pattern of this verse, 
We, we see there's no more discouragement, no more disappointment, no tragedy, no broken hopes, no broken dreams. No more financial issues. There'll be no legal issues, no ethical or moral dilemmas. There'll be no more health issues. You'll never have any broken bones, no more pain, no broken bodies, no sickness, no illness, no diseases, no more doctors, no more physicians, no more surgeons, no more dentists, no more clinics, no more hospitals. There'll be no more broken relationships, no broken marriages, no broken friendships, no broken churches, no broken families, no broken towns, no broken communities, no broken countries. There'll be no corruption, no mold, no rust, no decay, no breakdown, no wearing out. Can you imagine what it's going to be like to build a cabin with your friends on a glorious mountain lake? And a million years after you build that cabin, it's as pristine as the day you built it. Can you imagine painting a picture for a friend and giving it to your friend? And a million years later, that picture's still hanging on their wall, and it's just as pristine as the day it was first painted. It's not faded, not chipped, not cracked. But on top of this, there's going to be no shortage of minerals no, or metals or building materials or wood or plastic or steel or stone. Anything that we need for construction, for industry, for, for any kind of projects that we desire. There'll be no more wars, no more disputes, no feuds. The swords are going to be beaten into plowshares. And I love the thought that there's going to be no more battles, folks. No more battles with the wicked who rail against you as evil people because you trust the Bible in Jesus. No more battles defending marriage and defending purity and defending the distinction between the sexes. No more battles defending Israel and fighting anti-Semitism. No more battles with false doctrine in the church. No more battles with well-meaning believers who think you hold false doctrine, whether they're right or wrong. No more being misunderstood and misrepresented. And no more misunderstanding others and misrepresenting them. Some sweet day, folks, the battle is going to be over. The war is going to be over. And we are going to strip our armor off and lay it aside. And we're going to lay our weapons down and we will never take them up again. But now this blessed day also has a bunch of blessed forevermores. We're going to enjoy the presence of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit for all of eternity. We're going to be the Father's children. Jesus is going to be our brother. And the Holy Spirit is going to dwell in us for all of eternity. We're going to enjoy an eternal inheritance as the children of God, as the heirs of God, and co-heirs with Christ Jesus. We're going to have, enjoy an infinite utopia with infinite time infinite energy, infinite resources, and infinite opportunity. It is going to be impossible for you to not be fulfilled in eternity. We're going to enjoy eternal sunshine and smiles. We're going to enjoy eternal joy and happiness and fulfillment and peace that passes all understanding. We are going to have eternal positive energy and eternal passion and eternal laughter. We are going to enjoy eternal prospects and plans and goals. Can you imagine making a list of a hundred plans, a hundred goals, and ticking them off one after another throughout eternity? Every one of them is reached in its entirety and in its fullness. You never get shortchanged on a single thing. The cabins and the homes that you build in eternity and the boats and the spaceships that you build in eternity will last for eternity. They'll never break down. They will never wear out. They will be as pristine a million years down the road as the day you finish them. All the works of your hands will be eternal. So I love these forevermore concepts about eternity. It's difficult 
to wrap your mind around stepping out of the brokenness and defilement to this world and stepping into an eternal existence where there is no brokenness and there is no defilement. Stepping out of a world where everything is imperfect and stepping into a world where everything is perfect. Stepping into a world where nothing is ideal and stepping into a world where everything is ideal. Every positive thing that you can think about that's pleasing to the human heart will be yours in eternity and a million times more than you can ever think of. Eternity can be way more than we can think. It cannot be way less than we think. It can be way better than we can imagine. It cannot be less than we can imagine. So every positive thing that you can dream of in eternity is going to be yours. Eyes wide open, brain engaged, heart on fire. We'll see you next time.